Hey everyone, Sandra here, and I had a moment, I'm sure you all have had those, where I was sick for almost two weeks, and just trying to get through it, and it wasn't until yesterday that I remembered I had black elderberries and um, staghorn sumac frozen in the freezer both of which could have helped me get over this illness a whole lot quicker. I can't believe I forgot all about it. So today I am making elderberry syrup and um, I already have a video on that. It's an older video, but um, if you want to know how to make it yourself, I will put a link to that up in a card and down in the description box. So I figured anyways, while I am doing this, I wanted to touch back on the subject we covered the other day about prepping. Um, I posed a question to my homesteading group on Facebook uh, about what would be your biggest problem if you lost power for two weeks. And the overwhelming response was water. Um, whether it's city water or your own private pump, none of the pumps will work if the power goes out. And uh, you can lose power from almost any kind of natural disaster. Uh, thunderstorm, tornadoes, hurricanes, blizzards, wildfires, earthquakes, all of that can knock your power out. And while water, of course, is a huge concern, there's also people that have to worry about losing power due to um, refrigeration of uh, medicines or being on some sort of medical equipment that requires electricity. So I thought that would probably be a good starting point for people who have never prepped before, um, something to think about. Um, maybe there's a generator, at least a small one in your future. Uh, budget the money, go ahead and get a generator, so just in case you can have power if need be. I know there's a lot of people that worry about their freezers and losing all that food and that, but freezers, if you keep them shut, will keep that food for a good amount of days. And there's also that rule of thumb that when um, your, your food has started to thaw out, if the center of say your roast is still solid. Meanwhile the rest of it is just cold. It has thawed but the center is still frozen. It's still good to use. Go ahead and cook that up. But um, maybe for some of you uh, generator just isn't in the budget. At least not anytime soon. Well that's where you would need to start to problem solve and figure out how you could get around not having electricity for a few days or possibly even a few weeks. Now if you could find a way, um, go ahead and look up information wherever you can find it, um, to do some sort of maybe more primitive refrigeration method, something to um, you know, like in the way olden days, people had spring houses. So they would suspend um, items like milk and cheese and whatever directly over the water, over the spring. They literally would build a small house, um, preferably out of stone, but sometimes wood, right over the spring and keep the food right above it to keep it cold. Sometimes they put it directly in the water. The water continuously moved and it was cold and it kept their stuff fresh. Well, if you can look up more primitive ideas like that or just, you know, think outside of the box, maybe that's something you need to do. But I'm hoping there are some of you more experienced preppers that can comment on this and um, I guess everybody could just kind of give their opinions or what they've learned down in comments so that um, people can learn from each other. Um, maybe you've 
done something like this, maybe you've lived through a terrible disaster and you could share your experience and how you and your family managed. Well, anyhow, um, I'm planning on doing a few prepping videos. Um, not your standard prepping videos, but um, something more so for newbies, people who have never prepped before, people who are just thinking about it, and possibly putting these out on every Tuesday. And so I, I encourage and I ask those of you who are more experienced to come along and watch the videos and then give your opinions or your experience down in, in comments so that everybody can learn from it. Um, it's going to take me a little while to get this elderberry syrup done. It, it doesn't take that long to actually make the syrup. But I'm going to make it and then I'm going to can it up. Once it's made, it only has to go in the canner probably like five minutes. But um, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all finished. Well, as you can see, I got about four half pints out of those elderberries and I'm super happy about that. That should be more than enough to last me throughout the winter and hopefully I can give one or two away if anybody else should need some. Now if you haven't made any I encourage you to go check out that video. Um, if you don't have any elderberries on hand I think there's a link in the description box of the video where you can buy some dried because you can use fresh, you can use frozen, you can use dried elderberries. They'll all work. But um, don't forget to leave a comment about the prepping and electricity and what your thoughts are on it and it's it'd be interesting to hear um i'd like to see what everybody's take is on it and um start looking for some videos on tuesdays that'll be great i look forward to it uh thanks for watching you guys i really do appreciate it thumbs up subscribe share all that good stuff it was nice talking to you and you take care